Hey folks, it's Ray, DCGrammarker.com here, and take your first look at Apple's new sleep tracking. They announced it earlier this week as part of WWDC, but now I've got my hands on it and actually installed it and finished up my first night sleeping with the Apple Watch in sleep tracking mode to see how it all works. Uh, now I've detailed all this on the website as well. So if you wanna check that out for even more details, you can see it there. I'm basically gonna walk through the start to finish what it looks like last night setting it all up and then walking through this morning what happened and of course over the night what happened uh, and then comparing the data. Cause I also had on my wrist a Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro, a whip band and then below the mattress, I had a Withings Aura uh, sleep sensor thing as well. So lots of comparative data to see how it stacked up. Now keep in mind, this is just a beta in the first two days of beta. It's not expected to release until September, so plenty of stuff can and probably will change between now and then. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to go ahead onto the watch itself and launch a sleep app. Now it looks like you can do it some portions of that on the phone, we'll talk about that a little later on, but you need to go here, down to the sleep app. That's the one with the bed icon right there. Uh, and then you'll have the option to start setting up a sleep schedule. Now in this case, cause this is the morning after, it's a little different looking than the first time. So I'm gonna show you some uh, photos video I took last night to kind of walk you through each of those steps. So the very first thing you gotta do is to set up a sleep schedule. Uh, now it looks like later on, after you've done this once, you can go turn it off and not set it up again. But the first time it really wants you to set the sleep schedule. Uh, so the first thing is to set your sleep goal. In other words, how many hours of sleep that you have there. Uh, and then once you've done that, you can set an alarm. Uh, now you can turn off alarm if you want to, and that's what I did. So I just set the alarm for 7.30 the next morning and I turned it off immediately. Again, minor things that I'm sure will be worked out as part of the beta process to make it a little bit smoother. Once that's done, you then you have to turn on sleep tracking. This is the part that actually does the sleep tracking. So the first part is talking about like your life goals. And then this is the part that does the sleep tracking. So you toggle that and then you click next again. Uh, and then now it tells you about sleep mode on the watch. So what that does is it turns off the watch's display while you're sleeping. You can go and just tap it to turn it back on and see the time, but it basically turns it off to save battery and just has the screen off, which is kind of nice. Uh, once that's done, it's going to explain wind down to you. Now the whole idea behind wind down is more than just the watch. In fact, it's almost not the watch at all. It's purely the phone. And what it does, is it takes your sleep time, let's just say 11.45 p.m., and then it specifies a time before that, in my case, I set it for the default 30 minutes, that it's going to go ahead and pretty much put this lock screen on your phone and kind of tempt you to not use your phone. And again, I'll explain what that looks like in just a second. Now, once that's done, then it's gonna go and ask you if you want charge reminders. So it's basically gonna remind you whether or not you've gotten enough juice to make it through the night. And then finally, after all of that is set up, it's then gonna give you a recap of all of those settings that you've just set. Uh, it's a lot of stuff, but you're, you're done now. And again, I think this is an area where Apple can absolutely improve this. This is way more stuff than anyone should ever have to do to simply track sleep. But I'm optimistic. I'll give them three months to figure it out by September, you know, when this all becomes uh, really in public. Okay, and a quick note, if you're finding this interesting or useful or something, just simply whack that like button at the bottom there right now. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it looks like you can set up some of these things from the phone itself. So if I grab my phone right here and I go into the watch app, uh, let's see, watch, there we go. And then down into the sleep app at the bottom there, I can go and turn on some of these settings. So for example, turn on automatically, show time, track sleep with watch and charge reminders. I don't see the sleep schedule here, but that could be part of the bedtime routines. Maybe they're just interfacing the two differently. Uh, that's kind of a little bit all over the place, but again, things that could be tidied up down the road. Now, once that's all set, it's time to start this whole wind down process. In my case, I ultimately changed my bedtime uh, from midnight to 11.45 p.m. And so at 11.14 p.m., I got this page here. And that page basically tells me that it's a bedtime reminder. So in one minute, it's giving me like a one minute heads up that it's gonna turn on do not disturb and start the entire wind down process. And sure enough, a minute later at 11.15 p.m., which is 30 minutes, again, that window that I specified for the wind down period, it adds this new like lock screen atop a lock screen. Uh, and you can see that here and it says, good evening, do not disturb mode is now enabled. I don't have any alarms set for the next morning. Uh, and there's a dismiss button. So not an unlock button, a dismiss button. If I tap the dismiss button, I then get my normal lock screen, which again has even more information that's still in do not disturb mode. Uh, and you're supposed to be winding now. Now you're supposed to not screw with stuff and prepare for sleep. And again, there's plenty of research out there that shows that if you're using your phone before you go to bed, while you're in bed, but before you fall asleep, uh, it contributes to poor sleep. So basically having this like double lock screen with both pages, uh, one being way more dim than the second one, the second one still being dim is kind of like saying, yo, 
please stop playing with me, roughly. Um, so anyways, that happens for the 30 minutes, the period of the wind down. Uh, and then at 11.45, the start of my official like sleep timer, if you will, or sleep time, then the wind down screen turns into like kind of a sleep overlay screen. And that point it shows sleep well, do not disturb, no alarm set. Again, a super dim down screen. The screenshot looks dim, it is dim in real life. That's an exact replication. That's the exact screenshot. You'll see it's much, much dimmer. I can dismiss that just like before. And you'll now see on the side there, uh, uh, a slightly brighter screen, which is my actual lock screen, uh, again saying that do not disturb while sleeping. Before it said during the wind down period, now it says while sleeping. Meanwhile, on the watch itself, it now drops into its own sleep mode. So the screen turns off, uh, and if you want to access it, you just press a button and it turns back on again, but the screen is otherwise off, kind of like an older Apple Watch, if you will, not the Apple Watch Series 5, but an older one, and you can still see the time there. You see the do not disturb icon at the top, but otherwise the screen's off for the night. And during the wind down period, you'll the only difference on the watch itself is that it has a do not disturb uh, icon on there being a do not disturb mode, but otherwise there's no special like screens on the watch during the wind down period leading to that. So at this point, you sleep. You finally got to the point where you can go to sleep and it just does its thing just like every other wearable out there. So fast forwarding to the morning at around 7.28 a.m. I heard the baby being upset about lack of food. Uh, and so I woke up and went to get the baby food and, and make that all happy. Uh, a couple minutes later, I looked at my watch and it said good morning on it. So again, the new kind of wake up screen that it has there, it showed me my current charge, 83%. Uh, and then it showed me the weather below that. It does not yet show you sleep time. So again, I woke up around 7.27 or so uh, and then 10, 12 minutes later now, 7.40, uh, no sleep data yet, just a good morning message. So then I went and checked the app itself on the phone, my Apple Health app, to, curious to see if I'd see sleep data there. And I didn't see sleep data there, but I did see the time in bed data. But that's actually coming from the phone itself. It's not coming from the watch. And if you look in the source of that um, within Apple Health, you'll see that it lists the iPhone and not my watch. And the reason for that is that's coming from the bedtime routine pieces. And it's essentially saying when you set your phone down, that's what it considers in bed. And then you pick your phone back up, it considers you not in bed anymore at a very rough level. Uh, and so those two kind of blockers, if you will, were not what I actually slept at this point. It was sort of beyond that because I laid in bed for a while. By eight o'clock, I was starting to wonder. So now like 32 minutes later, if I had screwed something up because I looked in the watch and there was still no data in the sleep widget there, or the sleep app on the watch itself. So I was like, yeah, this is kind of weird. By then I get data. By then I had data on my Garmin. I had data on my uh, whip strap via the app. Like data was everywhere except the Apple watch. But I just kept with it. I kept on going. And at 8, 12 a.m., so 45 minutes after I woke up, I finally got sleep data on the Apple Watch. And you can see that here, if I go right there back into the sleep tab now. So I go to the little bed and I scroll down and you'll see analysis. Time of sleep, six hours, 43 minutes from 12, 17 a.m. until 7, 27 a.m. Uh, you can't tap on it or anything like that. Like that's all there is to do there. Uh, down below, I would have trending over the last 14 days. In my case, I've only slept with it once. So obviously I don't have that yet. Uh, but you know, Apple showed that on stage. Here's a quick picture of what that looks like. Uh, but Otherwise, that's all you've got right there. Meanwhile, in Apple Health, you can see that more detailed sleep data. So cracking that open here, we go into health. There we go. Show all health data and then scroll on down and sleep. So what we see here is the average time in bed. That's coming from the phone. But then we see the average time of sleep and that's coming from the watch itself. Uh, and if I tap on this there, you can see sleep start 12.17 a.m. Sleep end 7.27 a.m. These are within like two minutes of my actual sleep times. I, I took a screenshot at 12.10 a.m. when I was done on my phone uh, for the night and I fell asleep I think between four and five minutes later and then I woke up again somewhere between 727 and 729 depending on when I first heard the baby cry and when I actually got out of bed but I'd give it props for both of those being pretty much in the same ballpark there. Um, now, I would see more days there as columns if I had slept longer with it, but again, just one day right there. Uh, and I can go down below and I can see my heart rate while I slept. And if I click on this here, you can't really do anything else. Like there's nothing else to see. You can click show more sleep data, but this doesn't do anything. You just simply see the same thing week or month, uh, the same stuff there as well. Uh, if I go down though to the bottom, I can see show all data. 
And this is where I can see the actual underlying data and how it contributed into this. And so you see right there, the first two pieces at the very, very bottom are my time in bed for my phone. That's the phone icon there uh, from 11.17 p.m. to 11.46 p.m. And then I got out to take a photo that you'd actually track that correctly. And then from 11.46 to 7.40 a.m. So it missed like 12 minutes or so at the end where I definitely had got out of bed already, um, but that's fine. I had taken my phone with me as well when I got out of bed at 7.27. Uh, and then up top, you see the chunks of sleep as the Apple Watch thought. Now, in my case, I only got out of bed once during that sleep time period at roughly 5.20 a.m. to go to the bathroom and was fell back asleep in a couple minutes. So it thought I woke up many more times, uh, roughly for I think about a half an hour in total beyond that. So that's all right. That's pretty much the norm. Most sleep trackers seem to, I find, undercommit how much you actually were asleep. Like even if I slept the whole night, it seems to think there are times where I was interrupted or whatnot uh, beyond that. Now, there isn't a lot of other data outside of that. You can, however, see the HRV. So it grabbed two HRV samples in the middle of the night. Uh, so put those there, you can see. And then also it tracks your heart rate, of course, throughout the entire night as well, just like it always has. So how did this compare to all the other devices? Well, here's a giant ugly um, graph, if you will, or chart on the screen uh, that you can ponder while I talk through this for a second here. Uh, so from a time, a sleep standpoint, the time that I fell asleep, uh, every single device nailed that, you know, plus or minus two minutes, like spot on. In the time I woke up, every single device nailed that plus or minus two minutes. So like every device within a two minute span was, would nail that, which is great. Uh, average heart rate, different devices did or didn't show that. So it's kind of hard to compare, but looking at the heart rate graphs from all the devices, they were all in the range I would expect. Respiration rate, again, the Apple Watch doesn't actually track that. Um, Whoop and Garmin and Withings and others do track that, but it's not an Apple Watch thing. The same goes for sleep score. Again, uh, Garmin has that and Whoop has that and uh, Withings has that and plenty of other devices have sleep score, uh, but there's no sleep score on the Apple Watch either. Uh, and ultimately what I would say, the Apple Watch is like giving you the basics here. It's, it's super, super basics. It's like 2014, 2015 kind of basics in terms of sleep. It's saying, yo, you went to sleep here, you woke up here, here, I'm done. That's that's all I'm giving you. I'm giving you a total sleep time for the night and that's it. Um, so that's kind of what we've seen in general from Apple for a lot of the uh, sport and fitness aspects. There's not too deep. It's kind of the basics that, again, is mainstream and applicable to tens of millions of people, but they don't really push the envelope too much on what you can do in terms of sleep tracking. Now, ultimately, it'd be interesting to see where this goes over the next few months. Uh, certainly, Apple hinted numerous times during their keynote presentation that they've got more things in store for Watch OS 7 uh, coming up, quote, this year or later this year, to be precise. Uh, and I've got to believe some of those things are around sleep tracking. Some of those things will probably be for the next version of the Apple Watch, assumingly uh, Apple Watch Series 6. Uh, and that's pretty much the pattern they usually do. They usually announce things at WWDC like they did this week, and they hold back things for September for the usually annual uh, refresh cycle of watches. So we'll just see what happens. So with that, hope you found this interesting. If you did, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.